The Reset Podcast is a show about fresh starts. In business, career, relationships, health, and life in general, sometimes we all go forward to a new square one. Every moment is a new opportunity to begin again, and my guests will tell you how, when, and why they decided to reset their lives. I'm Franklin Taggart. Welcome to The Reset Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to The Reset Podcast. My name is Franklin Taggart, and my guest today is a person I've gotten to know over the last year, and I'm very excited to uh, present uh, Lenina Olivas. 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 I did it wrong. <laughs> Olivas. <laughs> Lenina Olivas. And uh, Lenina is an artist and... Um, very recently has been uh, asked to be the director of the Lincoln Gallery in Loveland, Colorado. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit today. The Reset Podcast, of course, is a, a podcast about fresh starts. And a few years ago, Lenina really discovered a passion for art, uh, and in particular, oil painting. Would that be right? Correct. All right. And um, so I'd like, to, I'd like to start a little bit before your art career took off. And let's talk a little bit about where you were maybe four years ago, five years ago. Um, you were a professor? So about three years ago, I was teaching. So okay. I was teaching at two local colleges. And for the first two years, I was at Ames Community College, but I taught at a charter school. So the first two years I taught, my students were 14 and 15. <laughs> So teaching 14 and 15 year olds college material was a challenge, but I love my students and they offered me a lot of great stories and entertainment and I loved them. Um, would go to trips to the Capitol and just talk about everything that was going on in the world. Once those two years hit, there was a change in the way the school was was working with the college. So our program got cut. Mm -hmm. I got offered the position by the community, excuse me, I got offered the position by the charter school, but was significantly less pay. So I figured it was a sign, so it was time to just teach at the college. So third year coming into college, I just, I just wasn't happy. There, it was a lot of stress for not that much pay and it was very unstable. Um, so it was actually October of last year when I thought it's time to make a change. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is not what happiness looks like. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going. But what I knew was on December 15th, the day of the final, I was done. So at 2.15, when class was over, I would have all my grades submitted and I was, I was done teaching. So I thought about what, when were times in my life that I was really happy and when I wanted, what I wanted to get back to. So I thought about when I modeled about five years ago. I used to model for artists and photographers and for print ads, so. I thought about that time and I thought about how joyous it made me and how much, just how happy and vibrant. I could see it in the pictures and I could see it in the pictures. I was actually complimented that I was the only model they knew that could keep a smile for three hours straight. So, <laughs> I loved that time. But as we all know, when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're not going to look like that. So I had my degree and I knew I loved art and painting was what I, is what I did when I was, when I was teaching and it was just something I did. And so I thought, hmm, what would it look like if I were to pursue that as an artist? So it was there. I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to look like, but I knew that's what I wanted to look. So I would either go to art, follow art, follow my heart, or follow my education, which was government, which is kind of funny. We're talking about that now on the, on the eve, not the eve, the, after. the day after. 
the day after election. So, so that's kind of where I thought I was going to go. So you, the, you taught government and political science? Yes, I taught government and political science. So everything about the process, about the history, about what's going on, how to create and produce change, uh, giving speeches, um, all, anything and everything to do with political science. So I like the 101 level. Yeah. Build on that. So American government. So at, on December 15th at 217, I was done. My grades, my grades were in, they were submitted. I was done. Like I gave my book back. I gave the jump drive back. I gave everything back and I drove home. I was the happiest that I can remember being. I was elated. I think the only other time I was that happy was after I got married. Or <laughs> puppy. Like, I was just so happy. I was done with teaching and, and I was on to my next life. I didn't know what my next life looked like, but it was going to be great. So then I, so few months, few months going forward, I tried, I applied and interviewed for some government jobs. And then I got into, I got into all the art stuff, connecting with other artists, networking. And I met a woman at the artist collective by the name of Pat Saunders White. And she told me about a position at the Lincoln Gallery. And I said, hmm, okay. So I looked at the job description and they wanted a director. And I was like, oh, maybe I should try for the assistant director first. So I thought about it. And a week later I applied and I got the position. So now I'm a director and I create my art and it's, it's really great. So and I'm really happy. So. Well, good. <laughs> But that's not the end of the story. Um, oh, no. That's just the beginning. The beginning. <laughs> yeah. So another question that comes to mind is um, that you're really at the very beginning of your art career. Yes. And um, I'm not going to be impolite and, and talk about your age. <laughs> but as a second career, um, or it may be a third career at this point because you were a model too. Um, but coming into an art career at this point in your life, what are, what are the things that you are surprised by? The things that I'm surprised by is how much teaching political science has helped me in becoming a director and how much talking about art and being comfortable talking about art. And I'm really comfortable talking about art as a model, being the subject of the matter and also being the artist. So I'm very versatile in how I see art. And then also how poli sci relates to being a director. So a lot of people wouldn't see that. So it's the, writing speeches, giving speeches, asking for money, shaking hands, being very personable, being in front of the camera or being the face of the gallery itself. So that's very similar to what it's like in the political realm. So there's a lot of similarities there. A little bit of overlap. Yes. So you've been well prepared for your, your role as a director. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about your role as an artist. Um, one of the things that um, I was going to share is that uh, this year, for the first time, you were invited to be a part of the Loveland Studio Tour, yeah. and uh, that just wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. And uh, let's talk a little bit about you know what, what what were the big things that you learned from the Studio Tour this year? Ooh, a lot of things I learned. Um, so, I'd like to move back or step back, I've been painting for three years, so I've had a great deal of success and how, how short my career as an artist has been. But for the studio tour, so what I learned in the studio tour is how, how important promotion is. 
like how comfortable you have to be talking about your work and explaining your work and showing your work. And even though I know my process and I kind of, no, I assumed everybody else understood the process, but like political science, not everybody does. So just taking pictures and showing people and walking them through the steps and doing um, still, still videos that showcase how I get from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And that made a huge impact. So that showing, so promotions and also the importance of having different price points for people to buy art. Not everybody can spend a thousand dollars on an original, but people want to support you. So smaller items is definitely. Yeah. One of the things that, um, I've really been impressed with are all the number of ways that you found to be visible in the community. And one of the most interesting is that you, um, you joined the adopt a road program. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how that, how that idea even happened. So I had my husband and I, we traveled to uh, new Orleans and new Orleans is an older, an older place, an older state, I should say. And I was just taken back by how much trash there was. And that kind of stuck with me. And so every morning, if it's 40 degrees or warmer, I take my dogs out. And I would often see trash on the floor. So, of course, I thought about complaining. But I thought, hey, I can pick up some trash while I'm walking my dogs in my three-mile walk. So I started to do that. But it would become a little bit difficult to hold trash and um, dog poop and hold my three dogs at the same time. So, so then I started thinking about that and I thought about the programs that I have seen adopt a road by such and such facility. And I wondered, hmm, I wonder how much that cost. So I did some research and I found out it's free. <laughs> All you have to do is clean up your side of the road however many miles you decide to adopt. So you have to pick up three times a year, which is nothing. Um, so I adopted the, it's a 1.5 miles in one direction and 1.5 miles in the other direction. So in essence, it was roughly mileage wise as far as I'd walk my dogs. But so I got that. So I, I adopted the road. Then my sign came and I had a, a little, a small opening. So I asked the guys from the road crew to help me and give me a call. And so I met them at the location and that was really exciting. <laughs> now every morning when I drive to work or drive to the market or drive wherever I need to go, I see my signs adopted by Lenino Olivas Fine Art. <laughs> it's amazing. So I really am really happy about that. Very good way and very innovative way to just keep your name in, in front of people. And that, I think that's really a cool uh, little out of the box kind of a, you know, idea. I love it. Very altruistic. And I get asked a lot. So how much just did that cost? And it costs nothing. It just <laughs> to the trash, which that's when I see people all say, Oh, I'm like, that's a good bill. So I have to pick up trash in my backyard because I have three dogs. So I just want to do it out there. So. Very good. Well, I think um, I'm, I'm interested to know a little bit. Um, most of the work that you do currently is in the area of still life. Yeah. And um, what about still life is interesting to you that makes you want to do that all the time? So I think back when I was younger and I would go to museums, and of course, I never had the talent to paint that way, or so I thought. And the paintings that I was always drawn to were the really dark classical still lifes. And there was, you know, the modern and the very colorful pieces. And those just, I don't know, I'd look at them and then walk away. But I would stand at those classical still lifes for hours and gee, it was a piece of fruit. 
But what was it about that piece of fruit that drew me in? Like I thought about the story behind that and I would create a whole story be behind a still life. Maybe that story was true, maybe it wasn't. So fast forward when I decided to become a painter, I chose my, I chose my instructor. So one of the great things about being a model is I got to meet an array of artists. So I got to understand how they view things. I got to see their work. And most importantly, I got to be comfortable with their personalities. So I chose still life. And before I create a still life, I think about the story behind that certain piece. And then I portray that story. And just like when I was setting up for this interview, I was checking the lighting and what it would be for like one light source or two light sources and what's the story behind me or around me. Is it comfortable? Is it warm? Is it welcoming? Like, what is it about that still life with fruit and a glass of wine? What is that story? So mm -hmm. that's what I always like to portray in my, my still life. When you were growing up, what kind of art was around you as you were, as you were growing up? <laughs> ah, I think the only thing I remember was an angel. I was <laughs> not in that kind of family that had a bunch of art. That was for those people. So that was not part of, that was not part of my upbringing at all. But uh -huh. when I did go to the museums, I was always drawn to the really large, dark, dramatic dark pieces and I just I love them in my mind when I think about art and what art is to me I don't think about well what I do think about I always think about a piece that you have in your living room in front of a fireplace maybe with your bearskin rug or your significant other or a glass of wine and, and just some piece that you would really love to just look at for hours yeah so there's um there's a saying, looking at a paint, looking at a beautiful painting is a lot like looking at a beautiful woman where you can just stare at it for hours. I never understood that until I started painting. Then it finally hit me what it was. I was like, now I get it. So you really start noticing details yeah. and subtleties and things like that. Yes. And, and I can sit there and, and stare at my pieces or other pieces that I have around my house mm -hmm. for hours. One time my husband sat next to me and asked, if I was feeling okay. And I said, why? And he said, well, you're staring off into space. And I said, I'm not staring off into space. I'm staring at that painting. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's just the feeling that I get from seeing pieces like that. Well, starting from still life, um, what, are, what are some of the things that you would like to explore in your next stage of artist development? I think the next stage of my artist development will be painting a mural and also painting utility boxes. I see me exploring the mural idea within the next one to two years. I have to re do the research on how you even start that process and what's the preparatory work. And also I've spoken to a fellow artist who does utility boxes and she said she would take me under her wing. So I'm going to be her her assistant. So it's not something that I, I know as of right now, like how to do it, but she has a lot of experience and she can teach me. Oh, so that I, good. It's really important for me to look for role models or guides and then ask them for their help and ask them for their input. And then once I learn and listen, or maybe I should say once I listen and learn, then that's something I can take up. Those are my two, my two goals in the next one to two years. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about um, as as a professional artist now. What are the what are the things that you find? There are kind of two questions in one here. What are the things that you find most uplifting about it, and what are the things that you find most challenging about it? Uh, the most uplifting part, I think, is when people come into the gallery and they tell me about their art 
and how they'll come in a little apprehensive and then they'll show me their work and as they start talking about their work and what it means to them like just to see that spark of light kind of come out so and i feel that same way especially when i was doing the studio tour when i would talk about my piece and somebody would ask and then i would tell them the story behind the art or that particular piece and i could feel myself like a ray of light coming out and i was just beaming it's like oh i felt great and um so i see that in other people in other artists that are professional artists and the thing i find most challenging is when people will say will ask me if i do patent sip classes so I think that's really fun, a very fun social activity, but it's a lot longer than two hours with the glass of wine or four. It's, and challenging is, I also understand that you have to, you have to plan on buying a certain piece, a large original and where it's gonna sit. I, I understand that. And I understand that people have different price points. But it's difficult when somebody thinks a original piece of art for five hundred dollars is too much money. Mm -hmm. and they'll turn around and buy two places, two two pieces that are from from a box store for two fifty each, and I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> so I find that difficult. Yeah. Or challenging. We can't make people have a certain kind of taste now, can we? Yeah, we cannot. So. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about uh, some upcoming shows that you've got going on. Um, you finished the studio tour and um, you, as a director, you've just hung the regional fine art show. Yeah. And now what for you uh, personally? So for me personally, my next event is going to be at the Sentara Mall in Loveland. I'm going to be the feature artist on December 6th from 5 to 8. So I'll be doing uh, live demos. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do two different demos or just one larger piece. And I'll have smaller pieces available for the holidays. So that will be December 6th at Sentara. The other one is $100 or less at the Lincoln Gallery. So I'll be one of three artists that will have um, pieces in the gallery from December 18th through January 4th, where everything is $100 or less. So if you have $100, you can pick up three pieces. So. Just in time for the holidays. Yes, and a lot of them will be originals. Yeah. Smaller or or coasters or cards or whatever but yeah it'll be a perfect time yeah. for them now the Sentara one is going to be at a place called the christmas shops yes and that is uh right in the main part of the Sentara shopping center area it's uh it's a really cool shop that's going to be featuring a lot of uh, art and craft from local artists um and it's really cool that you're a part of that so that's going to be on december 2nd uh, December 6th. December 6th. Okay. So December 6th at the Christmas shops at Sentara. Yes, it'll be where the old uh, New York and Company was. All right. We'll have links to all of this stuff in the description uh, so that you can find out more information about it. Um, the other thing that uh, I'd like to close with is uh, where can people find you online? So people can find me online on my website at Lenina Olivas Fine Art. Also, I'm on Instagram. Let me know we have a fine art and Facebook. Oh, and YouTube. Very good. So we'll, we'll include links to all of those uh, in the description as well. Um, let's just say, is there one last thing that you would like people to know about you before we finish today? One thing I would like people to know about me. Um, it's never too late to change. It's never too late if you're not happy. It's never too late to make that change and make yourself who you want to be and who you envision yourself to be. So I'm, I'm extremely happy with the change and who I am now being the director of the Lincoln Gallery and being an artist or being an artist and the director of the Lincoln Gallery. But yeah, I wouldn't change it and I wouldn't go back to teaching. 
<laughs> All right, very good. Uh, that's some good wisdom there. Um, I'd like to just say thank you to Lenina for being my guest today. Uh, it's been a f uh, fun conversation, and it's always nice to uh, have a chat with you. And uh, best of luck in all of the things that you're that you're doing. I'll look forward to seeing all of the creative ways that you make yourself known in the community. You just seem to never run out of ideas. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, just kind of look around and think about how I can contribute and get my face out there. Well, that's very good. For the rest of you who are listening, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this podcast. The Reset Podcast is available on all the different channels uh, that podcasts are, are found, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and um, iTunes for as long as it will be around. Um, it's also available on YouTube and on my website, franklintaggart.com. Um, I appreciate everyone's uh, attention in this day and age. Your attention is the most valuable thing you have. And for you to spend any of it on me is a real honor, and I appreciate it. Um, Lenina Olivas is uh, Lenina Olivas Fine Art, uh, dot com, and also on Facebook. And uh, we'll have some links to her, her work online. And again, Lenina, thank you for being here, and I'll look forward to. Uh, to hearing more from you in the future. Thank you, Franklin. My pleasure. Bye. Thanks for taking the time to listen to, subscribe, and review the Reset Podcast. The Reset Podcast features interviews, insights, and in-depth reflections that will help you navigate your own fresh start. If you'd like to be a guest or share an idea for a topic you'd like to hear about, please contact podcast at franklintaggart.com. I offer a wide range of services to people who are ready to live with clear direction, new possibilities, greater freedom, and unlimited creativity. If you're looking for a new beginning, I'm available to help you. More information is available at franklintaggart.com. The Reset Podcast is a production of Franklin Taggart and Make Your Own Way Media, all rights reserved.